True again with another Cafe Yocto episode featuring the FICOR AM62X system module and development kit. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about standalone Linux kernel development. Now, what the heck is that? Why would you need to do that? Well, in a previous episode, we built the Linux Borspore package, and that involved spinning up the Yocto project to build a single software binary, all the components as well, but it was all culminated into a single software binary that we can flash directly to a disk, and we can use that as a boot device to boot our SOM into Linux. So that would have included a bootloader, the Linux kernel itself, and the root file system with all the other user space applications and support included in there. Now, uh, if you went through that process yourself, you probably noticed that the building the Linux Borspore package is a cumbersome process, it takes a lot of compute resources, disk space, uh, and just takes time to, to uh, complete a build. Now, it, the Yocto project is intelligent, so if you change small things here and there, it'll utilize caching mechanisms and rebuild just what's necessary. However, still in, in introduces like a lot of overhead and ultimately it's very slow to iterate on any specific packages included in your distribution. So a good example here is if we want to iterate on the Linux kernel by itself, we can do so by cloning that independently of the Octo project, utilizing our cross compilation tool chain that we covered in the um, cross compilation uh, episode of this series. We can use that SDK to cross compile the Linux kernel and then we can uh, essentially iterate and develop our kernel a lot faster by bypassing the Yocto project. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, this guide here is gonna walk you through the basic steps. Um, we can grab the kernel used in the Alpha 1 Linux BSP for the FICOR M62 here with this command. This URL here is the repository that hosts the Linux kernel. Uh, this is a FITEC uh, repository on GitHub. Um, and then this specific branch, it's already specified here in the command, this branch is going to be the one used in Alpha 1 release. And so you would get the exact kernel you need for the Alpha 1 software uh, by running this command. And we can do that here in our Ubuntu 18.04 virtual machine. Uh, a pro tip, if you want to get this to run a little faster, if we don't care about the version control history for this repository, we can just use depth 1 here at the end, and this will just grab that latest commit essentially a snapshot of that branch, um, and it'll just kind of skip all the history stuff, which takes a lot of time to get. So let's run this together, and this will just take a little bit to complete. Moments later. There we go, so the clone finished. Now we have our uh, Linux kernel repository here in this Linux Phytech TI directory. Um, and if you recall from that previous episode where we uh, covered cross compilation in this series, uh, this SDK directory should look familiar if you don't if this doesn't look familiar, go check out that video. Uh, our cross compiler is essentially going to be in this SDK. We had a video covering that. So, um, in order for us to build the kernel sources, we're going to have to uh, export this environment here. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, this should look very familiar from that previous episode. So now we have access to a couple key environment variables. The first one is Arch. This is going to specify the architecture that our Linux kernel, um, the build system, it's a, it's a makefile build, uh, based build system, it uses this thing called kconfig, go read about that, a little out of scope for a video, but um, essentially that build system that ships with the kernel natively relies on this uh, variable here to determine what target architecture we're, we're essentially building our software for. Uh, and then the other one is the, uh, the cross compiler itself, like so. If you remember from the cross compile episode, we utilized CC. That's essentially the, uh, oh, I should have done that with an echo. Um, it's essentially the same, right? But it's a little different, and it really comes down to the, the project and how it's set up. Um, the Linux kernel just happens to use this one, um, and it doesn't specify the GCC or the sysroots, but uh, the Make file build system should have a bunch of other variables that are going to get drawn in. These two are really the important ones, this one and this one, for, for the Linux kernel. So with these two set, now we can navigate into our Linux kernel. And what we have to do first when building the Linux kernel is we have to first uh, make a default configuration for the kernel. And the configuration information really controls what drivers are built and included in that uh, image binary, the kernel image binary, and which drivers are built as modules, and those are going to be uh, uh, essentially drivers that can get loaded as needed. They're going to be stored in a separate location in the root file system. 
uh, we can control which drivers are enabled and how uh, via the config. And the way this kernel ships from Texas Instruments in the Arago distribution, uh, we base our Linux kernel off of theirs, right? We can grab this command here. Essentially, the, the kernel config ships in two files. Uh, this one, which is the Phytech TI def config, Phytech has added a few things into here. And then this is the uh, Phytech TI platform.config. Um, essentially, these are based on TI's uh, configs. We just added some things on top. So we can just grab this and we can merge both of these def configs into a single dot config, which is the one that's actively used when you build the, uh, the BSP, or not the BSP, the kernel. So let's merge those configs. A few moments later. And there we go. So now we should have a dot config. And because it has this leading dot, it would be uh, hidden if you just do an LS. So that's why you have to do this LS dash A. We can see the dot config. Uh, let's just take a quick look at that. Um, so we can see here there's these config strings. These essentially configure the kernel uh, with a particular driver. And that driver is enabled here either with the yes, no, or M for module. And module would be that external driver. A Y here would be static. So the driver that corresponds to this config would get built into the kernel image binary. So the more of these yeses we have, the larger your kernel binary is going to be. Uh, and there may be reasons to keep that small just so the boot time is faster, or maybe you need your image to be small uh, due to lack of disk space. There's various reasons why you'd want this done in certain ways. Anyway, now that we have the default config uh, set up, now we can actually just build our um, Linux kernel as easy as this, make-j, and then we can specify the number of processing cores. So for my system, if I do lscpu, I have uh, four cores enabled on this virtual machine, so it would be appropriate for me to do a four here, and this would allow make to process like up to four parallel tasks um, or, th or threads, I can't remember exactly. Um, but we're essentially enabling parallel parallelization, did I say that right? Uh, utilizing our four cores, we can do that here like this. Um, and this does take quite a bit of time to, to run through. Um, essentially, we're just making the default kernel right now. A little longer than a few minutes later. There we go, let's take a look and see what got built for us. So. In Arch ARM64 boot, we're gonna see our image, the kernel image. So this is what we can actually copy into the SD card. Um, and then in Arch ARM64 boot DTS TI, we should see our uh, device tree having been built as well, like so. So this one. So this is the this is the default device tree for the development kit, the standard one. Um, we could, we could, there's also overlays that are built out here in the same directory, so we could take a look at those, but this is really the only one we need just to boot the bare bones development kit. And then this is the, the kernel binary. Um, so let's talk a little bit about modifications now. So we've essentially recreated the pre-built binaries for the kernel, um, for ARM64 architecture or ARM in general. It's I think it's gonna always ship in two binaries, so the image and then the device tree binary, or blob, I think they call it, the device tree blob. Anyway, uh, let's talk a little bit about how we can modify this. So one way we can modify what drivers are included is we can utilize this menu config target, um, and it'll look like this. So essentially here we can go through, and there's a lot of driver support that we can enable, disable, set as modules. We can modify all those things here. Um, so you wouldn't want to uh, let's see, you wouldn't want to modify this dot config directly. And I'll, I think it'll even say to not do so here at the top, automatically generated, do not edit. So this is the way you would um, modify that. Um, and then as long as you save your config and rebuild the image, uh, it'll reutilize the, it'll utilize the new config that you've, you've created with your, your modifications in this tool. Um, so that could change what drivers are included here. We're not going to get. We're not going to talk about writing your own or porting your own drivers into the kernel. So uh, maybe in a future video, hopefully that's a complicated topic. But um, we can enable what's already included in the kernel with this menu config target. Um, 
Now let's talk a little bit about device trees. So we're gonna need this path, but not the DTB, right? That's the binary. We're gonna just change that B to an S. And now we can take a look at the default device tree. So this is really where Phytech customers are gonna spend most of their time uh, in the kernel. Um, and so this is a, a file structure that's hierarchical and it describes the hardware the kernel is running on. Um, so we can see that we're incorporating some uh, files from Texas Instruments directly. This is gonna essentially enable uh, the subsystems in the SOC. Uh, and then we're also gonna include the um, implementation of the SOC on the SOM. And then we're gonna include a file that, in, uh, that defines the implementation, implementation of the SOM on the carrier board. So we can see how much like the hardware, it's modular and kind of hierarchical where we're building off of these known good things. So for the most part, uh, uh, if you're a customer designing a custom carrier board for our SOM, you would like replace this file or you just modify this one. But um, note that here, this this file kind of, the name of it corresponds directly to our development kit. So you might want to make your own DTSI for your custom carry board and include it into this um, in such that when we build that Fiboard Lira, or you could of course change the name here too, but this is all just for reference. You could go do your own thing and set it up yourself. Um, but yeah, most, most of the time you're going to reuse this stuff, reuse this stuff. And we can take a look in each of these too. These are, um, they themselves include other files. So just time to take a look at the sock include. See, this is gonna include AM62. So it's all hierarchical reusing already created files. So there's no point in redefining what's already done here. Uh, the reason they would do this is there's, there's so many hardware variants, um, sock variants, some variants. So it's, it's modular to reflect that. Um, so we're gonna do a very simple modification to the default device tree. Uh, just to kind of showcase how this modular file structure works. So in here, we can just add a node that essentially overrides a node that defines that's defined above. And so anything that's occluded above, we can uh, modify it by changing it further down. Um, what we're gonna change together is we're gonna change the user LED. That was something that we discussed a little bit in a previous episode. I think it was the exercising the Ficor M62. Uh, we talked about the user LEDs that are enabled by default in the kernel, and they're uh, on by default. Actually, uh, I have my development kit here booted up. So this red LED here is user LED zero. We can essentially override user LED zero by adding a device node here in the root of the device tree in the .dts, and this will essentially override the user LED zero definition that's included from above. So that's the, the original source of that would be from this guy. And by writing it here, we're overriding this include. Um, and so we can add that very easily with this node here. Let me copy that in like so. Uh, some of the spacing got messed up. Ooh. There we go. And so yeah, this uh, essentially we're overriding the user LEDs node specifically user LED zero, we're given a new uh, new label, uh, the carry board heartbeat. And then we're actually gonna have this LED trigger with a heartbeat now. So this look, should look a lot like the SOM LED that's uh, blinking with an LED, blinking with a heartbeat by default. Uh, let's go ahead and write and save this file, uh, write and quit that file, I mean, and then now we can rebuild it like so again get the idea and there we go so that completed it still went through and rebuilt some of these modules it looks like um, but it completed the build here this time complete a lot faster uh, so now we can take a look at the um, the new DTB right uh, let's swap this into our SD card and boot it up so we can do that here like so we're just gonna power off the kit we could also transfer the DTB, swap it into the place uh, with the system up, and then we could just reboot. But um, I'm gonna show you where that location is on the SD card using the host. So let's power off the uh, system one module. And here we are. 
quick mount. So here's our mount points for that. Let's take a look in there. Uh, the root file system, you're gonna need pseudo permissions to do pretty much anything. So I'll just end up just kind of adding it there. Um, and it's gonna be here in the root partition, the boot directory in the boot root partition. It's confusing because there is also a boot partition. Here we're in the boot directory in the root partition. So it's a little confusing. Um, do your best to keep it straight. Okay, so now here is our kernel image. We could swap that in, but we essentially rebuilt the default one. Um, really what changed here is the default device tree. So let's go ahead and swap that in. So sudo copy arch arm 64 boot DTS TI K3 AM625. There we go, five board Lyra DTB. We're gonna swap that into media user root boot directory, and we're gonna sync. Easy peasy. So now we can eject our SD card. Make sure to do that safely always. And let's boot this guy up. And let's watch that LED to see what happens. We should see our change take effect. And that red LED is gonna start uh, heart beating once the Linux kernel boots up. So right now we're still in U-boot, no blinking. Linux kernel hasn't come up yet. Now during kernel initialization, it's gonna parse that device tree. And boom, there's our change coming through. And cool, uh, a cool thing is the heartbeat LED and that carry board LED now are kind of blinking in sync, which is kind of neat. And that's it. So we covered, just to recap, we, uh, we grabbed the kernel repository independently of the Octo project. We utilize the cross compilation tool chain that ships an SDK to build the default kernel first. And then we did a, a quick walkthrough of menu config to see what driver, how we can enable or disable additional drivers. And then we can also, uh, then we also did a very simple modification of the device tree to essentially modify the hardware definition in the kernel. Um, yeah, so that's standalone kernel development. <laughs>